Okay, maybe we can start slowly. Okay. Um, in this session, we will continue with Joanna with her uh, very interesting lecture and uh, about condo physics and the stage is yours. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, so uh, this morning I gave you some outlook uh, on things that we will look at and I wanted to fill in a little details. So now I'm, <clears throat> I'm actually following these lecture notes by Ian Affleck from 1995. Um, so I should say this is, um, I, I, I actually went to those lectures. This was my, when, when I was a PhD student, this was the first time I went to a doctoral school. I went to Poland, to Zakopane in the south of Poland and uh, Ian Affleck gave lectures about this condo uh, effect. And so I'm, I'm quoting a few things of his lectures there now which you can find on the archive. And uh, so I listened to these lectures and I said to myself, wow, this is really interesting. I want to do some research on this. <laughs> but then I did, this was before ADSFT, okay? It was in 1995. I was really young. <laughs> and, and then I, I actually ended up doing quite a lot of research on the condo model and ADSFT, but this was like almost 15 years later. So, um, or well, yeah, almost 20 years later. So, so this took a long time, but I mean, already at the time I thought, oh, wow, this is some very nice physics. I want to work on this. So that's why I'm very fond of those lectures. And uh, so let me, I'm not going to go through everything. So I recommend to you to read those, but uh, let me just fill in a little bit of detail um, about what I was saying this morning. Okay. So, um, yeah, no, I'm writing on, on my iPad. Yeah. Okay, so can you see? Okay, good. Yeah. I, I should say, um, I, for now with uh, COVID, uh, for two years, I gave lectures online to my students. <laughs> and so I did a, quite a lot of lecturing, but um, somehow Zoom changed and I used to be able to connect my laptop to um, directly to the screen, but now you have to log in the laptop individually. So this is what I've done the first time today. So I hope it works. Okay. So anyway, the, the impurity just travels in time. Okay. And um, and then we have these electrons that, um, you know, to the one loop uh, graph is just an electron arrives, scatters, um, scatters again, and moves off again. Okay. So, and, okay. So it has some momentum K. Um, traveling along this. And um, so th then um, in these F, um, Affleck loads, the energy scale. So I should say, so here I follow uh, Affleck lecture notes from 1995. Um, so, and uh, the energy scale in those nodes is called D, which is somehow the bandwidth. So it's a very condensed matter physics language. Okay. And then he, he does this calculation explicitly for the integral that corresponds to, uh, to this graph. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to do the entire integral, but um, so, so essentially the one loop change of this condo coupling. So now I, I use lambda again. So this is the condo coupling. Um, so this is one loop. Um, so there's a new, again, there's some, some filling fraction or some, some constant that enters the model. And then it's lambda squared because there's one interaction here and one interaction there. And, uh, and then there's this famous logarithm. So if there's a change from, of the energy scale from some one scale to the other, um, uh, that's the term that is obtained. So then the beta function uh, is d lambda by d log the energy scale and that's minus mu lambda squared. Okay, so negative. And so, so that's what um, um, that's uh, what similar to QCD. Oh, 
However, uh, so what's different here is that um, um, that we can actually resum the diagrams and show that there's an infrared fixed point. Um, so, so now this may be integrated. Uh, which uh, this corresponds to, which which corresponds to an infinite sum sum of diagrams. And uh, then we get, so the effective coupling at some given energy scale uh, will be the UV coupling uh, divided by one minus new lambda UV logarithm delta UV, uh, D UV over D, okay. Um, Okay, so, so that's an important result that we have for the coupling. And actually this is going to show up also later in my holographic model. Okay. Um, so this is an all loop result, Johan? Yeah, this is an all loop result. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I can show you an example for a two loop graph. Okay, this resumation, I mean, to do it properly, I mean, you know, all these techniques that we mentioned can be used. So, beta ansatz, integrability, uh, numerical RG, you know, all, all these methods um, can be used to, to obtain this result. And um, so, for a true loop graph, so again, we have our impurity. And uh, so then the electron scatters. <laughs> Okay, Affleck draws it in a very funny way. So it's like this, like this. And then it comes back. And then it goes like this again. Okay. Uh, so you see this um, electron, oops, oh, that was bad, sorry. Uh, sorry. Okay, so you see this is a complicated graph, but so because the problem is relatively simple, this all this can be resummed and, and then gives this result I was mentioning before here, this one. Okay. And um, so this essentially shows that um, so if so if um if this um, lambda uv uh, is bigger than zero, so it, this is the anti ferry magnetic case. And then this effective coupling diverges at the condo temperature. So that's what I also showed earlier today. Okay, so and and so this is this uh, strong coupling phenomenon, and 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 then uh, so Affleck and Ludwig then go on to show that uh, in um, below the scale, actually we 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 run to this um, the fixed point. Okay, but this is really now this perturbative statement uh, that we have. Okay, so then there's this mapping to the uh, the one dimensional uh, problem. So one space dimension and one time.
So and um, so in principle we have T and then we have um, polar coordinates, which we can choose. So if this is our impurity sitting at the origin, um, we can have this um, uh, this polar coordinates, and then um, so we essentially ignore the theta and phi dependence, which amounts to the so-called S wave approximation. Okay, only only spherical uh, scattering is considered, and then we we are left with T and R. So and then our problem is one plus one dimensional. Okay, so um, now in um, in condensed matter physics, um, people consider lattices. And um, so then, okay, there's some energy parameter which is called little t. And then, um, so we have our lattice, which essentially now corresponds to site on, on this one radial line. And so what uh, then we have is, uh, this is the, the first term is the, so the i is sum of our lattices. Uh, sites, and then uh, we have the kinetic term, which looks like this. So this is the hopping from one term to the other. And then just to make it Hermitian, we also have the inverse. So this is the kinetic term. And then the interaction, as I wrote before, so again, this vector is a vector in, in spin space and uh, um, nowadays, we just write a, a matrix here. And again, so this vector again just means that there's a scalar product with this term. Um, and it's a scalar product in the spin space. Okay. And so then this means we can write a current with an index in spin space, which uh, looks like this. So the same a here. Okay. So and, and okay. So this is the the interaction. Okay, it's getting a little full here. I hope you can still see it. Okay. So that's how um, this is uh, written in condensed matter language. And uh, so what I told you before now um, is just consider. Uh, uh, just consider uh, an SU2 uh, group and spin one half. Okay, so that's the simplest thing that can be done. And so this is what Con did in his original paper. And then we, we already discussed that in ads -CFT, we have to go beyond this. Okay, and, and then, um, and then uh, this TA becomes Sigma A, and this is the Pauli matrices. Okay, and um, then the ground state of the Hamiltonian is a singlet. And <clears throat> so we can um, just write the ground state. Uh, in the following way. So, so it's an entangled, entangled ground state, as you can see. And um, so this double arrow is the impurity spin and a single arrow. So this is the electron spin. So somebody asked about mesons earlier. Okay, so essentially you can view this 
the single state as being a bound state of this um, these two spins. So and it's it's a bit similar to to a, say a pi or sigma meson in QCD. Um, however, so let me emphasize again what I said before. In QCD, we don't have this machinery of conformal field theory available, and for that reason, we cannot really say. Uh, <laughs> Which states we are, we are going to have? Although I should say there are some papers. Um, so this because there was somebody interested in this before. I, this is a side remark. And um, okay, I'm not not at all an expert on this. Um, but some people are really seriously considering this and. One person which comes to my mind is my former co colleague from, from Max Planck Institute in Munich, which is Erhard Seiler. Um, so if you would like to know more about using similar techniques in QCD, I, I recommend using uh, looking at his work. Okay. But this is already from some time ago also. Okay, so that's just a side remark about QCD. Okay, so now let's work with our condom model. So, so this is our single ground state, and in in this uh, single uh, in this ground state, oh, sorry, in in this ground state, um, and so we have this total critical screening that I mentioned before. So now let's look at these boundary conditions. Um, you know, so the, I, earlier I mentioned this shift of boundary conditions. Are, at the origin, and um, so maybe you wonder a little bit where this comes from, um, and um, so why can I trade this interaction for a boundary condition? Okay, so somebody asked this question also earlier, so now I, I want to explain a little bit. Okay, so first, again, let's do this analytic continuation. Okay, so again, we have our impurity and so this is the radial direction. And then here uh, R is equal to zero. Okay, and then we have um, right movers and left movers. But okay, since we introduced polar coordinates, our space really ends here where r is equal to zero. But now what we can do is to analytically continue uh, to negative values. And this will make, let me take another color, these right-handed spins, uh, fermions flip, okay? And they become left-handed ones moving on that other side. Okay, so you can trade, um, the different direction of movement for a change of the sign in, in the radial direction. Good. And now, now for um, the boundary condition. So uh, let's. So um, okay, I want to. So the question is. Why can we trade the interaction which only takes place at r is equal to zero for a boundary condition? Okay, some people asked this question earlier this morning, okay? So, and now let me explain a little bit. I mean, first let's give a physical motivation and, and then use it in, in the um, conformal field theory context. Okay, so that's the question we are after now. So let's first, uh, first, sorry, <laughs> we look at the, At the UV fixed point. Where uh, the coupling vanishes. Okay, so um, so the RG flow tells us that if we go to the ultraviolet, we have asymptotic freedom. 
and we just have free electrons that don't interact and the uh, impurity just sits there. And um, then if there's no interaction, then we can have two solutions for um, 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 so um, then there are, there are two possibilities. For the so-called Bloch wave functions. So it's just the wave functions uh, that solve the Schrodinger equation for the Hamiltonian. Okay. And um, so then we can have we can organize them. So we can organize them into um, a parity even in a parity odd sector. Um, so, so then there's uh, two possibilities, which are parity even and parity odd. So the Bloch wave function they call it phi, okay, and um, so now if Oops. So the site uh, where i is equal to zero is where the impurity sits. So then for the parity even, so we have phi of i is equal to zero is zero. And, and um, then for um, phi is equal to i, we have um, cosine pay i, okay? And the parity odd is with a sign, okay? So um, the, the parity is under flipping from our um, positive to our negative, the coordinate R. Okay. Now, okay. Now, what happens? What happens in the infrared? Okay. So, um, so as I told you before, um, if we follow this perturbative picture here, um, the coupling diverges in the infrared. And this means we have a strong repulsive interaction at this point. Um, so the coupling at uh, equal to zero diverges. You are, you, are not, <clears throat> yeah? you are not using your old loop result. I'm not what using what? You, your old, old loop result. You had this exact result, all loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm using the all loop result. But then, yes. according to this, if uh, lambda uv is zero, it's zero every uh, all the way. No. Why? Uh, you, your lambda effective is lambda uv divided by something. Oh, yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. The, and you said lambda uv is zero. You are considering now? No, no, no. I'm just saying. I'm lamb, Well, you have to be careful because there's lambda uv also there. So if um, there will be a divergence here because this term will diverge. Uh, I'm not seeing your pointer. Okay, can you? Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. This term will diverge. Well, or rather say this term becomes zero and, and then the entire term diverges. Joanna? Yeah. Maybe the maybe the confusion also because you wrote the lambda uv there. The uh the right hand side the lambda uv should be replaced by lambda Lagrangian or lambda zero or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that the lambda Johanna. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you, you are, yeah, sorry about this. Okay. Okay, yes. You're very right. Okay, sorry about this. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. 
Yeah, it's just the lambda which is in, inside the Lagrangian. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks, Sandrin. Sorry for this. <laughs> okay. Um, so then, um, so in the IR, the, the, the coupling diverges. Okay, so, and, and then this means there's a strong repulsive interaction at r equal to zero. And this means there cannot be any other electron at r equal to zero. So the statement is now that, um, Okay, again, we, we have this, this singlet here. Okay, so there's one electron that forms this bound state with the impurity. But once we have that, then uh, according to the party principle, we cannot put any other electron in this position. Okay, and, and this means, um, so um, this means the parity even solution is no longer possible. Uh, because the, the the probability to find another electron at R K to zero vanishes. Okay, so if we solve our Schrodinger equation and the wave function has to be such, so um, the, so the parity even UV uh, wave function, I mean the one with the sign is still okay, uh, is replaced by um, just the mod of sign. Ki, okay. So we cannot have cosine Ki anymore. Okay, the other, the, the odd ones are unaffected. Okay, and so this leads to this phase shift that we were discussing beforehand, yeah? So, so the behavior of the parity even channel corresponds to a phase shift by delta is equal to pi over two, okay? So this means that this block wave function, which uh, um, is now e to the minus i k mod i, because there are two different i's in this equation. Uh, you be a bit careful, plus e to the two i delta, uh, yeah, delta e to the i k mod i, okay? And delta is equal to pi half. And um, so this means now that for the boundary conditions, so um, when the coupling is zero in the UV, Um, so psi left of r equal to zero is psi right of r equal to zero. Okay. But now um, we have lab for lambda is equal to infinity. We have psi left of r equal to zero is minus psi right at r equal to zero. 
Okay, so this answers the question, why does this very strong interaction can we try, why can it be tried for the boundary condition? It's just because we have a really infinite <laughs> repulsive interaction at this point, so we cannot have any other particle, which eventually is due to the Pauli principle because we cannot have two electrons there in the same place. Once one of them forms a ground state with the impurity and, um, and so um, this corresponds to this phase shift. So, and that's why, why um, the strong repulsion can be traded for this boundary condition. Okay, I hope this explains some of the questions I had that people asked this morning. Okay. Right, this is a very uh, nice explanation, mm -hmm. except that the, uh, it is slightly unintuitive why uh, this uh, uh, electron impurity interaction is uh, strongly repulsive. Is it, uh, well, if it's anti we chose this anti ferromagnetic case. Mm. Um, and well, if eventually it's due to the Pauli, I mean, okay, so, I mean, quantum mechanically, one electron forms a bound state with this impurity. Okay, so, and this leads to the singlet. And um, so this is the screening. Mm. But if there's this green object at r is equal to zero, I mean, in principle, you cannot see this impurity spin anymore, but nevertheless, it still has an effect because it just means one electron is bound to this place, which means according to the Pauli principle, you cannot have another electron there. Right. If we want to appeal to the Pauli principle, mm -hmm. probably um, maybe we can consider these two maybe electrons or whatever is uh, forming an um, bound state for a moment. That can be interpreted as kind of a strong attraction, not strong repulsion, right? Well, it's a strong attraction for the first electron, but for the second electron, it's a strong repulsion. Hmm? I mean, you know, hmm. one electron right. forms a bound state, but so we are considering it's right. there. But right. then any other electron cannot go there. So for any other electron, it's a strong repulsion. Okay. So yeah. I see. So at the at the center, there is already what the uh, spin singlet is already there. You, you yeah, you... yeah, exactly. Yes, very good. Yes. Is it kind of a gap there? Uh, well, not really again, because it's conformally invariant hmm. still. Yeah, so you have a conformal field theory with a boundary condition. And, and since, so because we still have conformal invariance for, for the electrons, uh, there is no gap. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah. Is lambda a pair of parameter? Uh, no, yeah, I think in this case, now lambda is the renormalized parameter, I mean, the one that flows along the I, uh, RG flow. Okay, so the fix, at the fixed point, the UV fixed point, the coupling flows to a zero and in the infrared, it, it diverges. Then do we have a, some phase transition between UV and IR? Because I, I remember that your formula for a, between lambda and the lambda EFF, you have a sun singularity layer. Yes. So does this mean that you have a phase transition between UV and IR? A phase transition. Yeah. Uh, could you go to the formula between lambda uh -huh. and lambda EFF? <clears throat> you, we can find that the denominator, can, oh, if the denominator is zero, then you can find the later, the singularity. Then I expect it's a phase transition. So does it mean that I have a phase transition between the UV and IR? Yeah, in some sense, you yeah, I think you can view it this way. Uh, yeah, I, I would be a little careful because I mean, you know, as as long as we have spin a half, um, you cannot really have phase transitions in the thermodynamic sense in 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 such a low dimensional system. But um, 
yeah, I, I it because if, okay, maybe let me say my concern. If you have yeah. a first solution between UV and IR, this means that you cannot use the RG flow to change the boundary condition because it's the flow is not continuous. Because, sorry, I didn't understand the lessons. Because what? Because because, because RG flow is not a continuous. So you cannot use the energy change or a flow changes the boundary condition because Your this Honor? IR is not the physical. Your Honor? Yeah. Can I make a comment on it? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. I think the uh, I was uh, uh, last uh, uh, an hour ago. I was uh, confused about the same point. But uh, after thinking about the moment, uh, maybe we can resolve it by considering the uh, energy scale. So, what do we mean by IR fixed point or IR? I mean, uh, I mean, conformal field theory means that before we get to that uh, phase transition. As you say that the, uh, I mean the, the scale where uh, bottom that is, uh, uh, I mean denom denominator is zero is the uh, giving the condo scale. Yeah. Right. After that, con I mean around the there, really we are, I mean the, the the theory is creating a gap or a scale there. So, what do we mean by, uh, I mean IR fixed point or uh, Conformal IR conformal field theory means that we should uh, uh, still outside of that region. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Very good. So let me maybe draw a picture. Okay. Okay. So um, let me draw. Okay. Um, so Because the conformal field, I mean, this beta function computation cannot predict anything about the fate of this RG flow. Okay, it's a boundary RG flow. So here's where impurity is, yeah? So this is where the interaction is. And um, so, um, so where we have this lambda, okay? So here we just have three electrons so this is where r is equal to zero, okay? And so these are CFT. Okay, so I have three electrons here. So I, I have a CFT and it says a CFT. <clears throat> the only thing now with this RG flow, yeah, I mean, maybe this is also a difference to, to QCD because this RG flow is really just in, zero plus one dimensions, okay? It's not in the entire, it's, it's not a coupling between these electrons. So these electrons are just free, okay? So they don't flow to anything. And, and they just remain conformal. And um, so I have an RG flow just at this position. So this lambda only, so lambda, the interaction appears. So the interaction was lambda times delta of R J times S, okay? so. Only when R is equal to zero, anything flows. And, and so the coupling for these electrons, um, which are here, this never changes. And so as I'm trying to argue now, what this flow just does is to say, okay, in the UV, nothing happens here and the electrons can just be there and they don't notice this double arrow. But then in, in the, uh, sorry, but in the infrared, um, they cannot be here anymore, okay? <laughs> That's the effect of this flow. And then if they cannot be there anymore, then, um, then the boundary condition changes. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And, and then, I mean, of course, it still remains a CFT because, I mean, the central charge is the, the central charge of the free electron. So in this example, it's just one, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, this doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it just means we have a, a theory of free electrons, but in, in, this, in this IIR case, we just say they cannot sit at R equal to zero anymore. And, and now this has some rather drastic consequences. So, okay, so, uh, so let me go back to this, these equations. Okay, so, um, so um, really the fact that we have the strongly 
strong coupling at this r equal to zero, just means that I get a minus sign here. And now this has rather dramatic consequences because this changes um, the energy spectrum. So this is, and this is important. So I want Okay, so let me explain this. Um, so um, when lambda is equal to zero, so the UV for this boundary flow, then so so the energy is related to the momentum. Okay, so this is the dispersion relation, and in, in, when lambda is equal to zero. Uh, we have that k can be pi times n over l. Okay, so so it's just the the number of sites that enter. But then when we, lambda is infinity, this this gets shifted, and we have k is pi over l. So l is the length of this, this um, chain of where the electrons can sit, and there's a shift. Yeah, and and so this shift um, changes in the energy spectrum. Okay. Okay. So so maybe your your questions are very good because and this is really the, the main point. I mean, it's just a flow at the boundary and it's not a flow of the entire electron system, just one put place in the space where something happens to them. And then because it's one only one place, it's actually a boundary condition. Okay, and, and so that's really why it's conformal field theory. I mean, you know, so the electrons remain free electrons. And so that's why we have a, a conformal field theory and just the boundary condition changes. What did you say about small l? You have a scale there, small l. Yeah, but okay. The, from the point of view of the electrons, the effect of the scale is just to change the boundary condition in the CFT. Uh, could you remind me what, what are the small n in before? This little n is just the number of sites that um, you know, L, counting. L, yeah. L. Uh. Little l is the size of the, um, I mean, the number of sites you have in here. Ah, number of sites. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I just, this, um, conf uh, this condensed matter language. Okay, so they just put their field theory on a lattice, and the lattice has size l. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, um, that's just following Affleck's notation. But we, we will return to the conformal field theory now, so um, then, then uh, we don't have this anymore. Okay, so that was some physics to explain uh, this boundary flow. And um, now um, I want to come to another question that I think John Hugh asked about this uh, um, going the Sugawara construction where we go from um, from the fermionic fields to the to the currents, and then you were saying that they, then we get quartic terms, but actually they they, they vanish. Oh. <laughs> so I, I, I will I will show you how. Okay. Um, so for the CFT description. Um, it is convenient to follow the Sugawara construction and um, um, write the Hamiltonian in terms of currents for spin flavor and charge. 
Okay, so uh, let's first consider uh, the free part. So the kinetic term of the Hamiltonian Okay, so um, so the Hamiltonian, the free part, uh, is just uh, so in this language that we used before. We now we have our left-handed fermions, um, and um, so Affleck now uses x. So maybe I should also use x. But okay, x is the same as my r that I had before. <laughs> Uh, it's just to, I, I want to stick to his notation, but just to, uh, I mean, it's just this radial coordinate again, okay? Okay. Um, so then we can define the uh, charge density. So which, in, in if we are in such low dimension, this is the same as the current. And um, so, in fact, okay, let me go to the new page. So, so because it's a left mover, it depends on x minus t. Okay, so this is now defined as, so the key point is that we have a normal ordered product here, okay. Okay, and now we have to be very careful multiplying two fields together at the same point. So if you want, we can use some point splitting regularization. So, what we really have is this. And we have to subtract the vacuum expectation value. Okay. So now drop So we just don't write so so instead of psi L, I just write psi, okay. But it's still this left mover. Okay. So and now let's see what happens to these uh, quartic terms. Okay, so if you, I multiply this current density together, yeah, for the which I need for the Hamiltonian, um, then this will be okay. So the limit epsilon going to zero is implied, okay. So <clears throat> then what I have um, uh, is actually something fairly long. So we get normal ordered product of psi dagger psi and then psi dagger psi again with the other argument. Okay, and then from the evaluation of the normal ordered product with the, um, we get another terms with the Green's function or so, okay. So if this I call G, And then um, we get another term which looks like this plus psi dagger psi x plus epsilon. Um, 
plus the Hermitian conjugate, oops, so, this, so here comes the Hermitian conjugate. Okay, and this thing gets multiplied by um, G of epsilon, and then there's one term which is G of epsilon squared. So I think that's the term which Sanjin asked about earlier. Okay, then uh, we can calculate. Uh, so for free, we just, our electrons are just free electrons. Okay, so, so when they propagate in, with the free propagator, and then this is actually minus uh, one over um, I times epsilon. Okay, but and now the quartic term actually vanishes. Okay, <clears throat> so <clears throat> by a fermionic by the fermionic statistics, um, uh, the four fermion mm. is absent. Okay, um, so, and, uh, okay, let me just write it. So we have the normal order term. So I don't even have, to, so I can take the limit um, epsilon goes to zero right away here. Okay, so, and but this is by Fermi statistics, this is minus uh, changing the order. Oops, that was wrong here. Okay. Okay, and then because it's minus this and together with the normal ordering, this gets just becomes zero. And okay, so and then we can write the Hamiltonian as I was saying before. So this is this this is Sugawara construction for the charge current, and. Uh, um, so now actually we can also show that the limit epsilon going to zero of j times x, uh, j of x and j of x plus epsilon <coughs> plus this um, local, also this divergent term here, um, this you can actually show that, um, okay, so let me write it in full. So, this is, let me write down what this was again. Using, so, so I have to use uh, what I, this calculation here. Okay, I'm using this calculation here. Okay, with, with the terms on the right hand side here. And then uh, putting everything together, uh, we get, uh, let me just write, psi dagger of x, Psi of x plus epsilon minus psi of x plus epsilon psi of x. And now, uh, because there's this term here, okay, you see it's a definition of a derivative here, actually. So this is actually equal to 2i normal order product of psi dagger d by dx psi. Okay, so, and this means that this free Hamiltonian, so which is the one that we had, this one, yeah, okay. So here you see the derivative and so on. I dropped this L and um, so this, I can now write as one over four pi um, J of X squared plus a constant. Okay, which is then kind of irrelevant. Yeah. So um, so this is this is part of the the Sugawara construction which I mentioned. So uh, essentially, we can write our free Hamiltonian. So this one, in terms of the current, which 
was defined here. Okay. And uh, and the quartic term uh, doesn't contribute because of this normal ordering, and and then this the Hamiltonian is equivalent to this term. This term. Okay, so that partially answers, well, this answers the question why we can do that because uh, the, the, so the quartic terms go away and uh, the, the derivative is precisely what we need to write uh, this term here. Okay, and I should say that uh, this whole procedure is called uh, bosonization. Um, so, um, so we note the algebra for this J of X is, well, if you look at the commutator of two of these, then uh, if you do the calculation carefully, you get two pi I D by D X of Delta X minus Y. Okay. And uh, the same algebra is obtained for um, another count, which is called So where we principally have to put this L again, okay? And this is not a bosonic field. Okay, so this introduction of the current essentially is this technique of bosonization, which is used a lot in conformal field theory uh, approaches. And... Okay, so that was just to, to explain this, this bosonization, but this was not only for the free part. And now um, we, we want to do this calculation, which I showed to you, um, where we absorb the, the interaction term. Okay. Um, page eight, page nine. Uh, may I have a uh, comment? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, your derivation uh, for the uh, Sugawara construction is quite good. But the point is, but uh, there's a one loophole. Suppose that you have many flavors or yes. quantum numbers, then uh, there will be say uh, more n and k. Then definitely yeah. that Fermi statistic argument fail because there can be uh, many different species. So that yeah. uh, actually I know the answer. I'm just telling you the answer. The point is that uh, in your case, your fermion was a spinless, so uh, there's no quantum number, right? But if you, in case you have a flavors yeah. or quantum numbers, actually you need a field thing to cancel those uh, quartic terms. So that mm -hmm. is why you have uh, those one plus K uh, coefficient in the uh, Scala constructions. That is what's exactly meant to enforce those uh, field thing relations. So, so that is how you cancel those quartic terms in case of many flavors or many other quantum numbers. So anyway, it worked. But my point is that a fermion statistics is not enough uh, to cancel those uh, quartic terms. I mean, yeah, okay. That's yeah. that, 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 yeah. exercise. So you can see, if you do it, you can see it, yeah. Just a okay, thank, yeah, yeah, thank you very much for explaining. Okay, so I, I just gave this very simple example. Okay, and, and so this is this, um, okay, so this is this example from the Affleck lecture notes from 1995. And it, it's just a simple heuristic example where there's only one flavor. But you are absolutely right. And uh, I totally agree that once we include all the, the, the many flavors, then it becomes more complicated exactly in the way you explained. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I totally agree with you. I, I just showed you some pedagogical <laughs> example uh, for the sake of, of the lecture. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a very useful uh, remark. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, um, good. Let's stay with, stick with the still with the simple example. Okay, um, I don't want to, but now we want to include uh, The interaction term. Um, okay, so 
then the Hamiltonian is. Okay, I think now maybe. Um... Yeah, okay, Let, let's still work with SU2 here. And, and I think there's was still also one flavor. So, I mean, it's still a simple, simple example. Um, but I think the, um, the channel and um, SUN indices can, can easily be added again, similar as you just said. Okay, so, so um, again, our Hamiltonian looks like this. And then again, we have this uh, vector of Pauli matrices. So if we want to put uh, fermionic indices, okay, so we can put an alpha here and an alpha, beta, and um, beta again here. Okay, just to put the, the fermionic indices. And again, there's a scalar product between these which is a scalar product in the spin space. And again, so this is local, just this boundary condition. Okay. And um, so this argument I showed you for the charge current can be reputed for the spin current. And then again, we have already, we have to be a little more careful, but let me just write the result. Um, so including charge and spin current, Then we get this term. And for the spin current, we get one over. Okay, I didn't show you the derivation, but it works very similar to what I showed you before. Um, okay, and then here we is our interaction. Okay. And um, now, uh, let's just consider the spin part. Can I ask a naive question? Sorry. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Why, why we don't have a S dot S X term here? Well, this we could have. It would just be another another model. I mean, and if you if you add S dot S. Um, Okay, Th this would lead us actually to the something like the SYK model, okay? <laughs> because in the SYK model you have, or maybe rather the such a Yi model because we have complex fermions because we can write our spin as a bilinear of fermions. Okay, so, okay, let me put a side remark. So before I wrote uh, S as uh, a bilinear of fermions like this, okay? So then if I have something like this, uh, I would get something which is quartic in these um, auxiliary fermions. Okay, so these were these slave fermions. And, and, and that would like, this gives us a model like the such def Yi model. Okay, but then, um, I mean, here what we want to do is to have a conformal field theory for the electrons with a boundary condition. Whereas the such a V model, then everything just ha is, it happens in the zero plus one dimensions. Okay, so then you get rid of the electrons and you just sit at this defect. And this gives an enormous amount of really interesting physics. Okay, but uh, it's a bit orthogonal to the condo model. But So is I, there a model combining the two, both condo and this? this YK? Not, well, okay. Maybe if I have time tomorrow, I, I will make a little bit of a remark. Okay. So maybe if you know about this SYK model, there's something called the spectral asymmetry, um, which in ADS-CFT you can relate to the, to the entropy of the black hole in ADS-2 space and so on. And, and in our model, in the ADS model, gravity dual to what I'm telling you here, we also have, um, um, we, we have also such a spectral asymmetry, okay? Mm -hmm. So, in, in, and then we were very happy about this because it's very similar to this um, such a V model and, um, so bottom line, there's many interesting things you can do, okay? And it's certainly possible to do this. And just at the moment, I'm focusing on slightly different aspects because I want to talk about these electrons, which you don't have in the SYK model. Okay, but the question is very good. 
And uh, the answer is yes, of course, you can add interactions of the spin. Um, and it just is a more complicated model. Um, but it's certainly very, very interesting. And many people, I mean, many people study just this without the electrons. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I will show you some similarities between the condo model and the such diffusion model tomorrow, um, which are very nice. But um, OK, at the moment, I'm just focusing on some different aspects. But yes, you can. Um, and it, it has been done. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, all right. So now we can introduce this um, uh, this uh, Katsmudi uh, um, expansion. Okay. Um, so so now expand the currents in a Laurent series. Okay, so the, the, I mean, essentially we use um, complex variables now. Okay, now I'm not sure I'm getting this right, but uh, probably, okay, so we get something like, um, if I'm not totally mistaken, there must be some other term here. Probably one. Okay, this I'm not sure about. Okay, okay, I'm just making up this in my mind right now. So, um, but essentially, I just want to say we do this uh, expansion, and and this label n um, just indicates this n. Okay, so um, okay, so and then. Um, Essentially, we, we get an algebra. So for so this is the already the the, the Katsumudi algebra. And at the moment, we don't have any any anomalous uh, central term here. And A and B are the the spin indices again. Okay, so. So this is a kind of Katsumudi. Without central term. And um, then, of course, before S. So this is the same the spin algebra here, and then of course they commute with each other. Okay. And um, okay, so now we can look at the Hamiltonian again. So it's only the spin part of the Hamiltonian. So again, using this uh, lattice formulation, which um, um, uh, we had before, then um, essentially um, we have And now comes the interaction term. Okay, and um, now we can complete the square. So, so uh, complete now we complete the square. Mm. And okay, so now we come back to this question. So before we were saying. Uh, in the infrared, uh, this coupling diverges. Okay, but this is a kind of scheme dependent statement. So, and uh, so what Affleck does now at this point is um, assume, 
uh, in another here uh, we have lambda i r is two thirds. Okay. Um, so um, um, okay. In this case, why, why does he take this value? Is because um, because then he can complete the square. And so um, so in this case, we can complete the square. And um, then just write that the Hamiltonian is essentially pi over L sum n minus infinity to infinity. And so now he, this is exactly what I told you before. He, now we just add the spin interaction here, okay. So that works because of the spin current and the spin operator and um, are in the same spin space. And okay, then there's a constant term which arises and that comes from the square. And uh, now in fact, um, there's an algebra which looks like this. Um, so then you can just show it looks like this. It's just additive because we just add, okay, so. And uh, so it's, it's, it's applying, it's, it's of the same structure, but, um, but um, so now what happens is that um, up to this constant term, now here we have exactly the same Hamiltonian. Um, this is this formally the same as the free Hamiltonian that we have before, okay? And then so it kind of, we have absorbed um, the spin into our spin current, but uh, again, as before, when we talk about these um, change of boundary conditions, of course, if we do this, we shift the spectrum. So again, this absorption of the spin leads to a shift of the spectrum. And, and Affleck and Ludwig, they, they investigated this with some very heavy um, CFT technology that I'm not going to consider here, but just to, um, show you here in this very simple case how, how this is done. Okay, um, so um, so so then this curly J, uh, which is uh, J n plus S, satisfies the same cut smoothie. Algebra as the free theory. However, the spectrum is shifted. So before I, I was explaining the shift in this very physical terms where I said, okay, we have this very strong repulsion and so we cannot have another electron at this place. And, and so this leads to a shift in the spectrum. And exactly this shift in the spectrum now can be studied with these conformal free theory techniques. And this is, so this is what Affleck and Ludwig did. Um, so, um, so for uh, spin one half, um, going from J to J plus S, um, shifts the spin current um, j from integer to half integer. And this means then we have a different representation of 
Auf der Katz, nur die alte war. Okay. Okay, this maybe is getting rather technical, but the only thing I want to say, this physical thing, which I told you before about this repulsion, which changes the boundary condition, this can now be exactly phrased in the terms of, um, of, um, of conformal field theory and Katsmudi algebras. And it's just um, saying that we, we, we join together different representations of the Katsmudi algebra in the UV to form this Katsmudi algebra in, uh, representation in the IR. Okay. And, and this again means that the entire spectrum of energies, but also the entire spectrum of operators in this conformal field theory is different, although the algebra is the same. Okay, so maybe I should write this down. Um, um, so conclusion is, um, the I, the same algebra, but difference representations that are obtained by using so-called fusion rules. Okay, so this is a really technical term from conformal field theory. Uh, to obtain uh, a combination of the current and spin representations. Okay. And, uh, but so the same, the physics, the physical picture of repulsion at the origin may be translated into the machinery of um, representations representations of CF boundary CFTs, I should say. Okay, so and now then you can ask about before our coupling was um, infinite and now our coupling is two thirds. Isn't that a bit arbitrary? But so the statement is that at stroke coupling, we don't really know what's happening and um, we don't know about the scheme dependence. And um, so, um, so, okay, so Affleck and Ludwig assume. Is the strong coupling by our fixed point? So, because then they can complete the square. Okay. Um, um, so, but this is, of course, um, so they say the infinite coupling may be related to this. So again, then they, they can say, so this is uh, lambda, the Q of T lambda that we had before. And, um, and now we have this cuts moody lambda. And again, we can write a, a expression very similar to before. Okay, so again, so then this means if 
if this becomes two thirds, then this is going to blow up and, and this goes to infinity when this goes when when this one goes to two thirds. Okay, so this is just a redefinition, but okay, so they argue that we don't really know what happens in the strongly coupled system anyway, and there's this independence. And uh, so they just assume that uh, the correct value to take at the fixed point in the CFT language is precisely two thirds, and it should have the same effect as we were discussing beforehand uh, in the perturb perturbative approach. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I think this was very technical. I hope you have some, I mean, I hope you still have some, some questions on this. Um, yeah, are there, are there any questions? So, you are not? Yeah. So, this uh, special value of two thirds is, I mean, it, it makes really an uh, algebra close. Yeah. But uh, if it's not uh, that special value, I will have just to get a uh, bigger algebra. Uh, is that a problem? Well, okay, so I think after Ludwig, they just say, okay, uh, we know there's going to be a conformal fixed point. We don't know how to calculate anything as strong coupling. If we use this conformal free theory approach, we know the coupling's value must be two thirds, okay? And then they work from there, which I think is legitimate because, um, you know, um, we know that there's this, uh, this fixed point arising, um, but, um, I mean, we don't know how exactly how to, to calculate this value of the coupling there. So they just infer it back from, from the conformal theory. So, so is there some kind of, I mean, I, I'm a bit ignorant, uh, the, some kind of theorem or the, that uh, at a fixed point, the algebra should be always Kasimudi? Yeah, because so Katsumudi is an extension of the Virazo. I mean, okay. So if you have conformal symmetry, you have a Virazo uh, algebra. But the Katsumudi algebra is um, if you have conformal symmetry plus some other symmetry. Okay, so maybe let me write this down. Um, yes, yeah. This is, is more people may have this question. Okay, so maybe I should have said this. Okay, so uh, conformal symmetry in one plus one dimensions implies uh, the Virasovo algebra. Okay, do you know it by head? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, so you take your energy. Okay, so again, you write your coordinates. Uh, let's do Euclidean. Uh, so if you have two uh, Euclidean coordinates x and, and um, x one and x two, then we can write um, the zz component of uh, this. Uh, again, we can expand in the Laurent series just as I did before. Okay, so, yeah, sorry, I should have explained this. Um, and then there's the this is the generators of the Virasovo algebra. And then now, but there's some power here for def. I think there's yes. a plus one. Yeah. <laughs> Good, okay, very good. So then um, this is the Virasovo algebra. Uh, okay, some number. And, and then there's this term with the central chart, okay. And then there's delta n minus m, I think. Okay, so this is called the Virasovo. So now assume that we have you know, so, uh, so that we have conformal symmetry plus some other symmetry. So, and the example which we have here is that we have another SU2 symmetry. Okay. Then uh, by conformal symmetry, the conserved uh, SU2 current, which is our spin current that I used before, may also be expanded in a Laurent series such as T. 
Okay, the same way as the energy momentum tensor. Okay, so this is a combination then. So the, this algebra, which I was writing before, uh, in principle, this can have a, so this is now the SU2 index. Okay, and this is the conformal expansion index. Okay, so this is for SU2. And this is the same N as, as this N. Okay, so then um, I get an algebra like this. And then there can be a central term with some coefficient, which is called the level. So this is again a central or uh, conformal or no anomaly and an anomaly anomaly term. Okay, and k is called the level. Okay, so, so using the fact that I have both conformal symmetry and this extra symmetry, I can also expand my currents in, in, in Laurent series. And, and so this is called a Katsumuri algebra. Okay. Was that helpful? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, but, uh, but my question was, I mean, you had this intact at F. Yes, yeah. uh, also satisfy uh, this SU2 algebra. Yeah. And uh, to me, this uh, closure needs for this uh, curly J, I mean, the simple linear sum J plus S. Uh, the closure needs, uh, I mean, looks a bit uh, artificial. I mean, without this uh, combination, we, we have SU2 anyway, I mean, SU2 Kashimudi uh, algebra. Mm -hmm. But okay, so this is just a formal formal manipulation of the algebras that we have because uh, where did I write it before? Oh. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you know, just combining this algebra with that algebra. Yeah, you need uh, the relative or uh, the equal uh, coefficient. Yeah, two third or well, equal one to have uh, yeah closeness. But uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, but uh, yeah. why do you need this closeness? <laughs> this is a bit. Well, okay. So uh, because I think you know, Affleck and Ludwig they just assume that they have conformal symmetry, or rather, you can show from this analysis before that you have conformal symmetry. Okay, <laughs> and and then since there's a fixed point with conformal symmetry, they infer uh, consequences. Um, from the conformal symmetry, which is, for instance, the closure of this Katsumuri algebra. And so on. Okay, so they they just um... yeah. <laughs> Without scaling, uh, Hashimoto is already there. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. Without this is scaling. Yeah. Before scaling. Well, that's, that's yeah. No. No. Okay. But. They want to show that in the IR, they have the same Katsumudi algebra as in the IR, mm -hmm. in the UV, sorry. And, but at the same time, they can exactly determine how the representations get shifted. Mm. Yeah, that's the point. Okay, let me say this once more, okay. So what they want to show is that in the IR, the Katsumudi symmetry algebra is exactly the same, formally exactly the same as in the uh, ultraviolet with closure and so on, <clears throat> but due to the shift, um, the representation gets shifted. Uh, because we add this S, this means any spin, uh, integer spin becomes half spin. And, and then they study, you know, with all these fusion rules, they construct the operator content of the theory at this IR fixed point. Okay, um, I see there is a this nice feature if you have this, yeah, two third, but. <laughs> well, okay, they, they just say, <clears throat> we know there's a fixed point uh, just because the theory is the conformal with another boundary condition, okay? And um, let's just use the fact that we have conformal symmetry to choose the correct value of lambda because anyway, we can't do any calculations or strong coupling, so we don't mm. know what lambda is. So is it always safe to assume the existence of a, I mean, IR 
fix the point? Well, I, I, well the, the reason is really that we only have this boundary RG flow. <laughs> the electrons don't change. So in the away from this place where R is equal to zero, the theory is still conforming. I mean, if okay. you know that the, there is a, uh, I mean, the conformal field theory in the IR, yeah. then it's very reasonable to try to figure out what that conformal field theory is uh, uh, by assuming the uh, interaction is a uh, conformal boundary condition. Mm -hmm. But a question is, uh, uh, is it always guaranteed to have a IR fixed point? as a conformal fixed theory, conformal field theory? I mean, okay, I'm not sure if they have a mathematical proof, okay. Mm. <laughs> but for physicists, <laughs> okay. Uh, physicists, what they just say is, anyway, we know that our theory is conformal and the only thing that changes is this boundary condition. And so the theory is still conformal, it just has a different boundary condition. Now, then you could say, okay, but maybe this boundary conditions breaks the conformal symmetry and so on. But um, um, I, I, okay, I think at least in the simple case where, where you, which I explained before with this uh, repulsive interaction, is, it's fair to assume that we have a boundary condition which preserves the conformal symmetry in the bulk. Does the scale symmetry imply the conformal symmetry in one plus one dimensions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> because I only remember this statement in three plus one dimensions. Yeah, yeah, that's different, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I think uh, I do not remember any proof in one plus one. No, I just the vice versa. I mean, the, the, the other way around. Mm -hmm. In one plus one is proved. Okay. But in three plus one is not proved. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Maybe okay. I should interrupt yeah. here because mm -hmm. we exceed time. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let me just quickly um, say what we're going we to can do continue tomorrow. discussion tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Let me just give you a yeah, yeah, yeah. what we do tomorrow. Okay, so today I talked a lot about quantum field theory, and I think even maybe if this at the end was a bit technical, you should just know it. Uh, using conformal field theory with boundary can give you a very nice description of this condo problem. So and then, then the motive, then of course in the motivation is now to do ADS CFT because we obviously have CFT with a boundary. <clears throat> so the question is, what does this boundary become if we have the gravity dual? <clears throat> then the other thing is, there will be a, a major difference if we do ADS CFT now because um, then uh, the electrons will be strongly coupled. Okay, so today everything I told you was that these electrons are free. And the only interaction is with this boundary. But in ADS-CFT, we always describe a strongly coupled field theory. So this means the electrons will already be very strongly interacting among themselves before you even put this boundary, okay? And uh, that's the motivation to use ADS-CFT because then you can also do condo models in, in much more complicated situations where also the electrons interact with each other. And, and that's the motivation to do um, uh, ADS-CFT in this context. And uh, yeah, this is what I'm going to show you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for yeah. these very clear explanations. It was very useful. Thanks. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let's meet tomorrow. Yes. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Have a good day, Yeah.